cold case murders cracked wide open. The murder of a California mom who was found stabbed to death remained unsolved for 40 years. Just recently, police used genetic genealogy to identify Barbara Becker's killer, a man named Paul Chartrand, who died more than 20 years ago. Barbara is just the latest in a fast-growing list of cold cases finally closed thanks to DNA technology. Since last year's arrest of Golden State Killer suspect Joseph D'Angelo, there's been a revolution in crime solving, and today, Daily Mail TV is taking an in-depth look. In Alabama 1999, 17-year-old best friends Tracy Hollett and J.B. Beasley were found dead in the trunk of their car. Both were shot in the head and one of them had been raped. Police collected DNA at the crime scene, but the case went unsolved until just last month when police hit a match on an Ancestry website, leading to the arrest of former ministry leader, Coley McCraney. In Florida 1984, Navy recruit Pamela Kahanis was beaten and strangled to death. Her body was found dumped face down near a vacant home. For 34 years, the murder remained a mystery. That is, until police used DNA evidence found on Pamela's body to close in on 59-year-old dental hygienist Thomas Garner. We were certain that he was the person responsible for the murder. Garner has been charged with the crime. And in California, 1973, Linda O'Keefe was just 11 years old when she was kidnapped, raped, and strangled to death on her way home from school. Last month, officials charged a 72-year-old great-grandfather with Linda's murder. Our investigators used forensic DNA testing and an online genealogy website to identify the suspect's DNA as being consistent with DNA left at the crime scene. Now, Daily Mail is reporting that James Allen Neal has been charged with two new counts of child sex abuse, and prosecutors say there could be more victims. And joining us now is CrimeOnline.com's Nancy Grace. So, Nancy, how were these suspects able to live such seemingly normal lives after committing such horrific acts of violence? It confuses so many people. You know, Jesse, they're psychopaths. They know inside that they're different from us. That difference is that they don't have feelings and emotions like most normal people do. It's also our fault. We don't suspect that the preacher or the hockey dad or the guy at the gas station is actually a serial killer. So we tend to ignore red flags. All right, so Nancy, we're in a new era, it seems, in crime fighting. Um, just how foolproof is DNA technology? Is it possible someone could be falsely convicted because of an inaccuracy in the testing? Jesse, DNA is stone cold, reliable. Here's the problem with DNA, and it very rarely happens. It can be argued the DNA scene has been contaminated or that it has been planted. To attack DNA science itself, impossible. All right, and this new technology helping close so many unsolved cases as we've seen. Nancy Grace, as always, thank you for being with us and bringing us the latest.